Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro, um, the COVID-19 edition. Uh, if you haven't been seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, which is in neighboring Westboro. But this is not about elder law. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to my presentations at the library or seen them on the uh, on uh, Northboro cable, you know Frank and Mary uh, and their, their goal in life is to live in the house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're in Northboro, that means you want to stay here. You don't want to go far away. Uh, and if you're, and because this is COVID-19 time, uh, we started doing this COVID-19 edition because you, seniors, Frank and Mary and me and you are uniquely affected by this. Um, and we wanted to really try to provide updates to the greatest extent that we could to folks regarding issues that might be directly relevant to you. So my wonderful co-host who had the mixed blessing of appearing here in Northboro only on Zoom because she was here like as COVID was starting uh, is this wonderful woman, Liz Tridiak, uh, who had, I, whom I had known from an earlier life that she had at Bay Path Elder Services. And she agreed to, to um, co-host the show with me and to continue to find great guests that she felt would be relevant to the issues that you may be facing right now. So Liz, thank you very much for um, doing this. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Arthur. Uh, and, 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 and who do we have today? So we have Justin Souza, who is our veterans agent here in town, but he also serves a few other towns. Justin was actually nice enough to come see me here at the Senior Center shortly after I started, and we walked around a little bit. He was one of the very first co-workers so to speak that I met in person so I obviously had to reach out to him first to come help us out on this on this show so Justin you actually have a really cool background and you've been involved in a lot of things and um, social services so can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the role that you're in now sure uh, well thank you first of all um, Arthur and Liz for having me here today um, so I work for the Central Mass Veteran Service District, which was created by uh, the towns of Northboro, Westboro, Grafton, and Shrewsbury. And it's got a history going back several years now. I'm probably the third or fourth, uh, maybe even the fifth um, director of veteran services for the district in its uh, various forms. Um, so how I got here, um, well, you know, college, couldn't find a job in 2008. Um, joined the Army, Army National Guard here, worked for them full time for, in Massachusetts for about seven years. And when I got out in 2014, I started working for a homeless veterans um, outreach program called Supporter Services for Veteran Families through Veterans Northeast Outreach Center, which has an office in Marlboro. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with a lady named Carol Callahan. Um, but she lives in Northboro and she's the outreach coordinator. Uh, she's not a veteran, but her father is. And uh, she knows a lot of people in, in the uh, world of veteran services. And she was able to kind of help me get my name out there. And when the Grafton uh, posted this job, because Grafton's the host town, uh, I applied after working for um, uh, VNOC for about three years, two, two three years. Um, and uh, that coupled with my veterans, uh, ex my experience in the military and being a veteran allowed me to get the job. And I've been here uh, July 27th, actually yesterday. No, sorry, July 17th, last week, was my three-year anniversary. Hey, um, congratulations. So, thanks. So I've been here for three years. Um, I was a medic in the Army. And um, I think that translates very well to helping. Uh, one of our biggest responsibilities is helping veterans with claims, which is a lot of medical documentation, as well as I'm inherently compassionate. And uh, that helps me a lot with... Uh, with a lot of the veterans we work with, so. So my my son was a, a medic in the army for uh, five years before he oh, got cool. out. Yeah, and it really changed his life. He, you know, it, because he, it helped him really find what he wanted to do, and, and and you know now he just finished his 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 undergraduate, and he wants to go to nursing school in the fall and stuff. But he said it, the army him. was just the army was great for him, and and discovering you know a medic being that he really wanted to be a medic, which was great. You know. So that's all that's all pretty exciting. Yeah. So Justin, Please. you mentioned you help people a lot with claims. Can you yes. talk about that a little little more? Yeah, so uh the the um 
a veteran service officer job description wise in Massachusetts is is required by um, state law chapter 115 or Mass General Law chapter 115 to help um, administer a program called chapter 115, um, which is a, a benefit program that mostly is able to help lower income uh, veteran families. And then we also are required to um, help veterans file VA claims. Uh, VA claims come in two categories, roughly um, service connected and non-service connected. So um, we also help them sign up for any type of veteran benefit that they could ever find. If they find a benefit, they come to my office and say, how do I sign up for it? It's my job to figure out how that is done. And uh, luckily I've been able to take advantage of almost every veterans benefit from the VA specifically so far. And I'm very familiar with the Massachusetts ones. Um, but there's a, there's a process to the, um, the VA claims where you have to file forms and provide supporting paperwork. Uh, so, you know, we have, uh, a f f we're very familiar in my office with those claims, um, how to get a service connected disability rating from the VA or how to file a non-service connected pension claim uh, for those who are eligible. Uh, so that, that's pretty much the bread and butter of my job. Um, and uh, it seems right now uh, uh, with many veterans from Vietnam reaching um, Vietnam and Korea reaching that age where they need to go into assisted living or have a home health aid. Mm -hmm. The non-service connected VA pension is one of the most popular um, programs that we're helping veterans sign up for right now. So, so, and, and, and Jason, I think you really, I was, I was going to ask you specifically yes, about that because, because uh, once again, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 70, I turned 70 this year. I identify with this group and 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 of course I realize that that's the generation that went to Vietnam so there must be a yeah. ton of those people and and my sense is more and more especially but that that people think about this that, that service related benefit when they're going to assisted living because the assisted living people really you know really encourage them to think about it but for the for the folks who are at home and maybe having some trouble at home right I think a lot of them really aren't aware of it or are aware of kind of what the criteria are and what a tremendously useful thing it could be for them or for their even or for their widow, you know, if they've if they pass or their wife. So if you, if, you know, if that's OK with you, Liz, could we ask them to explain that one a little bit, a little bit more? Sure. Um, so the VA has um, the VA Benefits Administration, which is part of the overall Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, they they finance the program and you have to be a veteran from an eligible wartime period. Uh, they have a list of eligible wartime periods and for Vietnam veterans, if you had boots on the ground, that period starts a little bit sooner than if you were just a wartime era veteran. Um, wartime era meaning you served in the military, but you did not have physical presence in um, the war zone or somewhere near the war zone in the case of our uh, Blue Water Navy veterans. Um, so if you're, if we're able to determine your eligibility as a veteran or as the unremarried surviving spouse of a veteran, uh, then we, we can go ahead and help you file um, the paperwork. Uh, there's a specific form as well as uh, supporting documentation um, to show your relationship to the veteran if you're the surviving spouse. Um, but basically, you have to show the medical and financial need for the program, and there's three levels of the pro of the claim, uh, the pension uh, benefit, and uh, the lowest level is just the financial need, and that's the, the flat pension rate, and that is hard for uh, many families to attain here in New England because our cost of living is so high, our mm -hmm. incomes tend to be higher, um, but most often once a spouse has passed, then the other spouse loses that portion of their income and, and may be eligible. So it's quite often um, widower veterans or uh, surviving spouses uh, that are able to to meet those the financial need. Um, one good thing is it, uh, eligible medical expenses, expenses are able to be used to write off a portion of your income, thus lowering it so that you're able to gain the benefit from the pension. Um, so I can talk a quick example. Uh, if, if say a veteran and his spouse um, or her spouse um, have 
$40,000 worth of income, but they're both paying $40,000 together to stay at an assisted living facility. As long as they are getting assistance with two of the five activities of daily living that the VA has detailed, that assisted living cost counts as a eligible medical expense. So if they're spending 40 grand on that, that would bring their income to zero. They would then get the full ben, uh, full pension amount uh, split up in 12 monthly payments across the, the year. Now, uh, there is an income and asset limit. They have to be below $130,000 in uh, income and assets. And your assets include uh, cash on hand, easily liquefiable accounts like an IRA after your certain ages up um, or retirement accounts, savings. Um, they don't count your home if you're still at home or you still own a property. They do, They count any property after two acres. So if you own a five acre ranch that after two acres, they, they count that as an asset. And then they don't count your vehicle or personal belongings. Uh, so if you have a $10,000 painting of some sort, they won't count that as an asset. Um, that's a personal belonging. So after all that said and done, as long as your income and assets combined are below $130,000, then they do that uh, income calculation to see what benefit you'll get. So I may not have explained it very succinctly here, but um, you know, once I see the um, your your financial paperwork, I can I can definitely tell you uh, within a good ballpark figure how how much you're going to get. For, right. from the VA. And so, now that does take six to nine months to go through the process. So you complete all the paperwork and you can send photocopies in. So we get a big packet together. We, we send that off to the VA. Six to nine months later, usually they'll send you their decision. Uh, in between that, they may ask you for uh, more current paperwork or if you have some, if they have questions on your, your stuff, they'll send you a, a letter. It's imperative that they, you reply to that because I've had several families right now that have failed to reply to the VA in a timely manner, so they're denied. But that's not the end, because you can appeal it. And the appeals are taking about 35 to 80 days now, so they're a lot faster. It used to take three to four years for an appeal to come through. So, um, was I? Yeah, no, I think that's, got, I think that's a great appeal. Sorry. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think that's a great summary. So that, if you, so that just for, for veterans who have got, who are at home, if you're in assisted living, you definitely want to be applying because the, you know, the notion, the effect of you're being able to subtract all of your assisted living from your income means that as a practical matter, you're always going to be getting like the maximum benefit, you know, but even if you're at home, if you've got a home lot health of aid costs, you got home yeah. Health aids. yeah, if you've got home health aids, um, which a lot of, you know, a lot of folks my age and older have, you know, which they want because they, Frank and Mary, they want to stay home, right? They don't want to go right. to assisted living, right? They like it at home, right? And that should but be if, their right. Yeah. If you've got that, that right. it, it, it can subtract from your income and therefore really, you know, make the benefit very, very substantial. So, you know, thank you for that. I, I really appreciate that. That's great. So, Justin, who can contact you? It, does it have to be the veteran or could it be... Um, their caregiver, their spouse, their child. Sorry, my dog is uh, <laughs> begging for my attention. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's a cute little, hey, Chuck, look, you're on camera. Oh, uh, look at that. Hi, look Chuck. That. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wonderful boy. Sorry. Um, so okay, we can contact him. Quite, quite, uh, quite often it's the children of uh, the veteran or the spouse that are contacting me to help their parent apply for it because quite often their parent is advanced age and may not be in the right state of mind to be able to apply for this. Um, I just had a gentleman who contacted me from Shrewsbury. His father passed uh, two weeks ago and they just interred him um, yesterday at Bourne. And, um, you know, his, his surviving spouse, the, the gentleman's mother, is now in financial need for, for the pension. So I was actually just writing up an email back to him to describe that pension and how he would apply for it um, on behalf of his mom. Now, there's a form the VA can use to designate a third-party authorization so that this gentleman will then be able to talk to the VA specifically about this claim. Because normally they only talk to the veteran or to the veteran's, um, uh, the, f the family member that applies for it. So, um, yeah. So that's, uh, anyone can call really, niece, nephew, um, even a caretaker. If a caretaker is, uh, I've had, uh, I've had um, assisted living facilities call me on behalf of their, um, their, their patients, um, especially the, the ones that are 
a little more expensive. Um, we had someone who was paying, I think about $10,000 a month to stay in a facility because uh, they had some significant medical needs, um, but it was draining their resources really fast, obviously. And uh, they were able to apply for the pension and maintain their, their, uh, their living status at that facility. So that was, that was good. Great. Questions, Liz? Because I, as I was going to say, I just had, I just had, I just had one more. You know, you would just mentioned that the that the the kids can, you know, can can do this on behalf of the parent. So you don't have to necessarily have a power of attorney from the from the, the veteran no. or the spouse. You can actually, it, there's a separate form that that'll allow you to do this. That's great. The VA doesn't actually recognize uh, civilian. I call them civilian because they're non-VA, uh, civil or you know outside powers of attorney. Um, they have a third-party authorization form, um, and then uh, I don't know if that takes the place of a power of attorney, but there is a. Recently, they've updated um, since 2018 when the new pension laws came out in October of that year. They've also started updating all their forms. Some of their forms hadn't been updated for decades. So they now include, uh, they do include a spot for a power of attorney to sign the claim form. Um, but other than that, I don't, I don't know specifically if they recognize the, the powers of attorney. So as long as the veteran or the surviving spouse is the person that's name is on the application is the person that signs the form, then it's valid. Um, and I, I believe powers of attorney give uh, that person the ability to sign the form or sign forms in that person's name. So I think they can, they can do that. It just, they need that third party authorization because you know how the government is very specific. You didn't file form A, B or C, so we can't talk to you. Um, but uh, Liz, you'd given me a couple other talking points. Um, yeah. And um, I wanted to, uh, wanted to go over one, um, something that is available to veterans, but is underutilized. Yes. Um, so my um, my experience uh, here opened my eyes to. Sorry, hold on one second. My dog. <laughs> That's reality, right? Yes. <laughs> sorry, he's wanting to go out. I have to let him out in a little bit. But um, uh, an underutilized uh, topic that I didn't know about until I got this job. Uh, having talked to the assessors in our town is the uh, service connected tax exemption you can get as a disabled veteran. Mm. Uh, many veterans I talked to, they don't even know about it. And uh, what it is, is uh, the state set a limit of $400 as a tax exemption you can apply for if you have a 10 to 100% service connected disability from the VA. So the first step is to file a service connected claim for some type of injury or illness that affects you today that, that started in the military. One of the big things for veterans in this, uh, uh, you know, just past your age category, Arthur, is hearing loss. Um, you know, they 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 might have been on a firing line in in Korea or Vietnam or um, around artillery. Uh, the artillery ones are like shoe ins. Uh, most of the engine room guys in the Navy also shoe ins. Um, had a difficult one where we had a guy who was uh, posted on a basic training. Um, uh, rifle range for six months with no hearing protection. And even though they have a picture of him on the, the range, in the range cadre's uniform, they denied him stating that they, they had no like definitive proof of hearing loss, something like that. So it can be a little bit of a back and forth with the VA when you do file claims, excuse me, particularly about hearing loss, because what is due to age and what is due to the time that, you know, you, know, you were in the military for, for two years back in the 60s. Right how how much did that affect your hearing you know um so the that all comes back once you get service connected you get a rating of some percentage from the va you take that service connected letter that award letter they give you and you fill out the form at the assessor's office if you own property and they'll give you up to uh, starting at 400 dollars. some towns double that uh, it's a local option to double that so you can get 800 bucks uh, and if you have a greater if you have a 100 percent rating i think you get a thousand dollars and if you're a surviving spouse who is collecting dependency indemnity compensation because your veteran was 100% and died due to service-connected disability, I think you get a full exemption. Um, and then I think there's a new one that's also up there, uh, particularly in Northboro, uh, where we're working with the Arsenaults. Um, well, I unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it on the town uh, meeting uh, up for a vote this, this town meeting uh, due to COVID. 
um, but it's an exemption for the parents, uh, Gold Star parents. They get a full exemption off their property taxes due to their their child sacrifice um, and their sacrifice. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good state exemptions and state benefits you can get, particularly if you're heavily disabled. Um, they favor you a lot. Um, so that's something I saw that was very underutilized. And um, I, I would uh, also veterans license plates. This is a big thing. A lot of veterans, especially Vietnam vets, they came back and there was a stigma attached with their service. So they don't want to be recognized. You know, they don't want someone to know that they were in, in the service. Well, if you get the veterans license plate, it, it's a uh, it says veteran on the bottom and it has a, either a, a United States flag emblem on the left hand side or uh, the icon of your service. I have two cars registered. I have a flag and I have the army symbol. And um, both of those registrations, a portion of that money goes to the Holyoke and Chelsea soldiers homes, which wow. we've recently learned due to the COVID crisis, we're drastically underfunded. So I, I'm trying to um, recommend that uh, to all the veterans that I talk with, if they're not if they don't have veteran plates, get them because you're helping out other vets that are in the, whole, the soldiers' homes that, that need they need those funds to uh, to support them. So that's that's probably the most underutilized thing I've seen. Most people don't get it because you know it's a hundred bucks for two years. That's a lot of money, but any other type of vanity plates around the same price, and it's going to a charitable um, a charitable function. So uh, if you can, you know. you're a veteran, come to my office. I'll help you apply for it. That's that's incredible, Justin. This, all of these benefits, they're it's confusing. There's a lot of red tape, and we're so lucky to have you here with us to help people navigate the system. Um, it's just so complex, and just to have somebody sit down with you and go through the paperwork and help you get everything in order is more than half the battle, so to speak. Um, so you work in Northboro one day a week, and you're in the town other towns other days. Yeah, it's a little difficult right now to um, most of our town halls are closed yeah. to outside um, appointments. So everything I've had to do is had to be by phone or email mostly. Um, I have had a couple of video conferences with uh, some of the younger generation of veterans. Um, typically, the older generation is fine talking on the phone um, mm -hmm. and I can mail you the forms to fill them out or I can email them to you. Uh, if, if, a, if a veteran needs to apply, I can I can. Get, I can get you what you need. Um, the, the, our services have only been impacted a little bit by this, uh, mostly with phone calls, because I never realized exactly how many walk-ins we got that have turned into phone calls. So um, uh, that was something I wanted to mention too. Um, uh, Non-monetary benefits like uh, counseling, mediation, um, there are services available that are reopening uh, through the VA in Worcester. Um, specifically for combat veterans uh, who were in a combat zone or who are uh, in a hazardous uh, hazardous pay area, uh, if they got collected hazard pay, uh, you can go talk to a place called the Vet Center, which is veterans who are trained as counselors and overseen by social workers and psychologists. So you're going to talk and they can often pair you with someone who is very, some, like the first time I went and uh, this, this has been a big awakening for me too, because I got out in 2014 and I, I was not aware of what I was suppressing. I was putting away a lot of feelings. And um, I don't know if you saw the uh, Northboro Veterans Day uh, tribute that we did digitally, but Adam Costello, my, one of my predecessors, uh, had a very significant moment on camera where he kind of broke down a little bit due to the feelings that came up with something he was talking about. And uh, I hope he doesn't mind me referencing him, but uh, we talked offline about that. And uh, he, he was very surprised that, that those feelings came up so strongly. I'm di I've discovered that that's something that happens to a lot of veterans after you get out because you're no longer on mission. You're no longer go, go, go. You know, you're, you're at a walk speed now. You're, you're a civilian life. You're home with your family. Mm -hmm. And things just come up. Things, triggers that I didn't even know were triggers. I'd see something and be, especially dogs. We had a couple. Uh, we had a couple bad instant in interactions with animals. Uh, packs of dogs over in Afghanistan, and uh, Chuck barking, which he loves to do, is one of my triggers. So that's something I've had to work through. But anyway, I went to the vet center to try and talk with someone. Uh, they first paired me up with this guy who, uh, former Marine, couple tours in Fallujah, which was a very bad place to be, 
Uh, I mean, this guy, I think, had a Purple Heart. And uh, definitely above my pay grade when it comes to, like, levels of, you know, deployment and combat danger and that kind of stuff. So I felt like, well, my troubles weren't, you know, necessarily on par with his. So why is he listening to me? I don't want to bother him. Don't worry about it. He was great. And he even mentioned to me if I was uncomfortable talking with him, there were a bunch of other counselors to talk with. And I finally got paired up with one who was a National Guard vet who I knew from the National Guard. And uh, he had become a trained counselor at the VA or at the at the vet center, which uh, they have an agreement to keep your records separate from your VA file. So they're not normally given out unless there's a specific um you know, danger to you, you or yourself, your family, or if you file a PTSD claim, mm -hmm. then you can authorize them to share that counseling with the VA, but otherwise they're locked away. So like if you're a cop, you can go talk to the vet center. If you're a firefighter, you can go talk to the vet center. They're not going to share your info with uh, your employers or anything like that. Okay. Um, so sorry, but yeah, that's, um, that's something I, I think uh, a lot of veterans underutilize. Um, a lot of the old folks too, um, you know, the ground pounders from Vietnam and Korea, they're, they've been suppressing those feelings forever. So they're fine doing that. And they don't want to talk about their problems. They, they, and that's, that's fine. But I found that I find that if the more you talk about it, the easier it gets to deal with. And um, it, it just makes your day a little less stressful. Um, mm -hmm. You're not worried about, you're not worried about going out and having something trigger you or, uh, you know, having to, like, I was angry all the time when I got home and I got sick and tired of that. And I didn't know why. Well, it's because anger is a thing that, yeah, sorry. I could talk about this forever, but uh, um, anger is a common side effect of uh, bottling up those feelings. It comes out kind of in an anger aggression. So having figured that out, you'll find I'm pretty happy-go-lucky now and loving life. So um, it must you. be that dog. It must be that dog. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. He's a shepherd or he's half shepherd, half German, uh, half German shepherd, half lab. And a little bit of pit bull and um, boxer in him too. And uh, he's playful as heck. Great with our kids. I got a one-year-old and a three-year-old and he's, you can put your face in his mouth and he'll, he'll like back away. Cause he's like, no, that's not okay. Don't do that. The kids tug on his tail all the time and he'll give him a little growl, but otherwise he's a sweetheart. Um, but he does like to bark. If he doesn't know you, he'll bark at you. And uh, that that's the one, the one thing, but otherwise he's a fantastic pup. Um, my wife and kids are awesome too. I, I got out of the military because I met a girl and uh, she, she was worth it. Um, it's definitely worth it. And now we have two kids, so it's, uh, it's been great. Um, and they've, they've been home a couple of times. Um, we've been giving them to our uh, friend to watch who uh, um, she's also staying at home watching her kids now cause they're not in school. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's been nice. We've been able to work from home relatively uninterrupted. So you're just such yeah. a great ambassador for the veteran services. Oh, this, thanks. This was so good. This was so good. So, so Justin, we did, we, I think we need to wrap up, but I, but I want to make sure that there's, a, there's a number. And, and by the way, we can also have our, our producer put any, you know, contact information right on this video for, or for people who want to contact you, but can okay. you just kind of just say it, say a number, you know, the, like the best, best way to reach you. I'll, I'll say it uh, just like people when they leave me a voice message, they say, hi, my name's so-and-so. You can reach yes. me at 435 Click. <laughs> what? No, leave, leave me a voice message with a clear, slow number and repeat it at, like this. Uh, my name is Justin Souza. I'm the director of veteran services for the town of Northboro. Um, you can reach me at my work cell, which is 774-293-2208. Again, 774-293-2208. I can also give an email address. It's my first initial, J, followed by my last name, Sousa, S-O-U-S-A, at centralmassvets.org. And that's Central Mass, M-A-S-S, vets, V-E-T-S, dot org. And hopefully your producer will have that uh, scrolling as I say that. You can also reach my, my website uh, through the town website. If you click Veteran Services, it should send you over to centralmassvets.org, which is my website. On there are my contact numbers, and I have a part-time guy in Westboro named John Gallina. He can be reached at 508-366-3085 if you have any trouble getting in touch with me directly. Wow, this is great. Th I want to 
yeah, no, thank you. Um, this is uh, my honor to help share this information and work with uh, veterans. You know, um, it, it's helping someone learn something. I wanted to be a teacher, I thought initially, but I really, I don't handle kids very well. So um, I did a year's worth of a master's in education and uh, a lot of study, but veteran services where, where I'm at, talking, uh, talking with people who need this information, sharing it, figuring out how to get it for them, how to get them the help they need. Uh, it's the most rewarding job. So, more, so this, do you think, do you think he's found the right profession? <laughs> I think so. I think I you're so. in the right spot. <laughs> so. Justin, thank you. Thank you so much thank for you. this. Liz, thank you so much for this. You know, this has just been, this has just been wonderful. I think really helpful to a lot of folks in general, but, you know, especially to folks, you know, my age and older who are kind of dealing with a lot of these issues now, you know, who were fighting a long time ago. So thank you very much, Justin. Thank you, Liz. Thank, thank you, folks, for watching. Uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here uh, in North Bro, the COVID-19 edition. Thank you very much. <laughs>